Hey guys, this is Gloria, and we are live, and I get to be here with Mickey Stonier. <laughs> Mickey Stonier is actually my chaplaincy trainer, uh, but before we get started, I want to check some of our uh, audios, and I want to kind of get this shared into some of our areas here, guys. So, we're going to go here, and... There we are. Live, and I get to be here with Nick. We're going to share this to here. And we're all good to go. All right. So I'm here today, and um, we I was so excited to get this interview in. And um, as you know, you guys have followed me around for so many years. You guys know me from being a former pastor and things. And you know that I share a lot of my journey online with you because I want to give people hope and I want you guys to see what it looks like to go through a journey of healing and hope and where all the great resources are and stuff. And you guys all know that I always recommend the Rock Church for resources because it is a gold mine of resources. Well, you know, one of those resources that I found was the, uh, the chaplaincy ministry here at the Rock Church where we are today. And I'm here with... Uh, the great Mickey Stonier. <laughs> I don't know about great. The old Mickey Stonier. So. And um, and I, uh, Mickey, I'm so I'm really honored to have you today. Actually, yeah, it's yeah. a blessing. And and I, you're recording this. It is recording. We're live uh -oh. now. You're this good is, to I got to go. be careful what I say. <laughs> I can get away with live things, but uh, okay. Yes. So there's there's going to be you know, people, you know, on the live today, possibly, or like on the replay as well, um, and then on to other different um, platforms. But I was so happy to have you to here today because um, you were like a vital, you know, place in my journey, which you probably don't know about. You probably don't know a lot mm. about what I, how I view you or what I've been through. But you know, when I found the uh, the chaplaincy ministry mm -hmm. and I attended it and things, oh my gosh, I was just like, this is like, this is everything that I was looking for. Like I could use this, yeah. I could use it in my life, I could use it to help other people. And I feel like equipped, I feel like I have tools, you know, and then you're so approachable that like if I needed, like one day I was gonna uh, do a wedding mm -hmm. and you like, you like, well, yeah, come over. <laughs> I'll, I'll we'll figure it out. <laughs> So I, and I loved that. I needed that, you know, throughout my journey, like somebody that I could like, you know, Hey, can I, can I, can I get some help? And you were there. So, um, but I want you to share, um, you know, kind of like a little bit of your backstory okay. and then, and then how you became, you know, what you do today and stuff. Well, hi there, Facebook world. <laughs> uh, what a joy and friends of Gloria. Uh, you're a friend of mine. And my, uh, <clears throat> I have a calling to help bring hope and healing support for people going through hardship. Yeah. That's uh, my mom. Um, don't have a lot of memory of my mom. She got cancer when I was about eight years old. Mm. Uh, this is way back when. And um, uh, she was in and out of the hospital, a lot of surgeries. Uh, back when I was a child, that was, uh, but I think that was before electricity uh, but anyway <laughs> the medical field was you know pretty brutal in treating cancer so my memory mm. of my mom was that she was sick a lot and I had a great mom she loved family but she was uh, in and out of the hospital and then she finally passed away when I was 12 and yeah. that day when you're told your mom has uh, passed yeah. sticks with you for the rest of your life I remember where I was what you know what I was doing, felt like, everything. And then, mm -hmm. so my big sister, five years older than me, uh, started taking over the parenting role. You know, she took care of me, cooked for me, took me everywhere. She was, uh, you know, just my best friend. But three years after my mom died, when I was 15, uh, my sister was killed in a car accident. Oh, and man. so that, you know, hardship either makes you bitter or better. And for me, uh, I just had a desire to help people. Yeah. get through what I had gone through and I didn't come to faith till I was about 21 reading the Bible the Gospel of Matthew and 
I had a lot of questions, and so I got plugged in in a Bible study group that eventually became a church. And I was gonna—I was studying to become an elementary school teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, love family, love kids, and I mm -hmm. uh, was got my teaching credential, and I was. In my Bible study grew into a church, and then mm -hmm. they asked me to be the children's director, youth pastor, then eventually family minister, and so for about 18, 20 years I did that, and wow. did, I helped us, we started a private Christian school. Yep. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a law enforcement family. My dad was a police officer and went through the rank, became police chief, mm -hmm. and so here I am working with kids, and lo and behold, Gosh, 28 years ago, 27 years ago, a firefighter uh, died in San Diego off duty mm. of cancer. Mm -hmm. And a firefighter reached out to me and said, hey, could you go help this family and pastor them through this? So I did. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another. I ended up doing the service, the memorial service, developed friendship with the family, the chief at the time, Robert yeah. Osby, a wonderful man. He said, hey, we... We need a chaplain. Would you be our chaplain? I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean? He just ride along. We'll give you a badge and <laughs> uh, pager back then. And we'll call mm -hmm. you times like this. So I got to know the culture, and I was like, oh my gosh! And and now I, I have an Instagram, and I'm on Facebook, Mickey Stonier, um, and I'm, I'm starting to. I wasn't doing much on social media. And then the Lord ministered to me to tell my story. And so every day, basically, I'm, I'm out in the community now because I'm a chaplain for a number of agencies and yeah. police, mm -hmm. fire, military. Yeah. I work with the medical examiner. There was a young child uh, that died this past week. Mm -hmm. um, and the fire department calls me, and, and we have a chaplain corps now where mm -hmm. we come alongside the family or the firefighters, first responders, police and fire, to help them process what they're going through. And so this week they responded to a young child. He uh, uh, can't give the details of it, but uh, he had no f physical, nothing wrong with him. And in mm -hmm. the middle of the night, he uh, passed away. and. And so the firefighters, I help them walk through what that, you know, how to process this because a lot of them have young children at home. Right. It hit them hard. Mm. And, and so I'm working with the medical examiner to find out, okay, what happened, that I can help the firefighters know, gosh, they did the best they could, but, right. yeah. you know, what happened? And they, they don't often get closure. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm out in the community yeah. um, just trying to help people and my daughter uh, has a nonprofit. And in fact, any of your viewers would love you to visit uh, her website. Yes, it's, I would love uh, them to visit her website. It's yeah. www.healingcentersd.com. Mm -hmm. Healing Center SD for San Diego. And don't know how this happened, but my <laughs> daughter uh -huh. became a trauma therapist wow. and <laughs> That's so great. but she had a calling to really bring god into people's healing yeah so she closed her practice very successful practice maddie stonier right. stonier yeah and so closed her practice i mean very successful and started a nonprofit to bring in spiritual prayer guidance she has a team she works with yeah. And they do phenomenal work, uh, supernatural. Because wow. what would take years for people to find progress with some of their trauma, anxiety, mm -hmm. depression, all of that. It's just a few sessions where God meets them, brings wow. healing. It's for believers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, the counseling, it's, uh, I'm sorry, the healing center, SD, mm -hmm. uh, dot com. But people can do virtual online. That's sessions great, yeah. they can do in-person sessions they're here in san diego yeah. and then for um, pastors missionaries that are out of the country they do reduce price mm -hmm. so uh, it's something to work through some you yeah, can apply like and yeah, as so a pastor people. and get some help and mm -hmm. um, they're it's phenomenal some of the stories of healings that have taken place so yeah. my family is all about helping people through crisis so yeah, and for that. anyone 
uh, you know, if I can ever be a resource uh, mm -hmm. to you to help. I don't know all the answers. I know who does know all the answers. That's the Lord. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, people always ask me, hey, how do I take care of this? Where do I go for this? How can I help this? And I know somebody. I, I know God, and I also can. Ne I network with a lot of people. So, yeah. and people have just mm -hmm. called me. You know, my cell phone. I give it out readily and text yeah. me mm -hmm. if I can be of service. Six one nine eight four three thirty one hundred. I give it out to anybody and everybody um, that I can be of service to. Yeah, that's so needed. That is so needed. There's a lot of people like I have pastor friends and missionary friends, and you know. Uh, where there's kind of this inner circle of trying to get help and there's kind of no outlet. And so it's nice to have a place where someone can go that it's not like this ring of trauma going around and around and around. Well, this happened to me and this happened to me and this happened to me, but there's no like help mm -hmm. or equipping. So um, that's why I like that you referred your daughter, that you have, you know, mm -hmm. some things that you do. Um, so that's, and that's what I want to share out here with, uh, with my Facebook Oh yeah, friends. I would love for everyone to get trained as you did. And, um, you know, a lot of people come to faith during hardship because wow. they're asking, why is this happening? Where's God in the midst of my pain? Yeah. And, uh, so a third of people's Christian testimonies yeah. share that it was during crisis, yeah. brokenness, loss. And so um, we do International Critical Incident Stress Foundation. It's uh, certified courses to train people how to help people in crisis. That's all that I, I do a lot of classes on grief and yeah. chaplaincy, peer support, group mm -hmm. crisis intervention, law enforcement. And throughout the year at the Rock Church, we offer these classes. We train up chaplains. We have a whole chaplain corps now for San Diego Fire Rescue mm -hmm. that we've trained up of different faith backgrounds because we have rabbis and priests that can help uh, people in the community that have their faith background and yep. referrals for other faith perspectives. But yep. it's mm -hmm. during times of hardship to bring comfort to people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm called to do. And we haven't fully set up our schedule for next year's training, but um, it'll be on the website and on my Instagram. Whenever yeah. I do courses, I get the word out, but mm -hmm. we're, we're just uh, still trying to work on our strategic calendar for next year. We're a little behind the eight ball here, but uh, I yeah. do classes for the uh, fire departments locally, for the county, for mm -hmm. the police department. And then we do a special, my chaplain fund. It's, I have a, uh, it's called Chaplain Fund, mm -hmm. and I have a benevolence fund that I do things for firefighters, police. In fact, yeah, this week, I'm, awesome. as soon as we're done, I have to go shop for yeah. a retired firefighter for Coronado. <laughs> He's Aww. retiring in two days, so I'm uh -huh. going to be with him tomorrow, have some gifts for him. He'll be in the parade in Coronado on yeah. Friday night, 6 yeah. o'clock, and then mm -hmm. on uh, Monday, we're, um, you know, um, providing... Uh, you know, resources for our chaplain corps, Christmas events, and then mm -hmm. uh, throughout San Diego. In fact, TSA, I may be doing a appreciation luncheon for TSA wow, during so the holidays. Good. Just did something yeah. for the Harbor Police. Yeah. And yeah. for the fire departments, where I'll bring in a taco cart or awesome. we'll do Phil's barbecue and take care of all the troops just to let them know they, they're loved. In fact, Thursday. Right. Uh -huh. Uh, Station 5, that's tomorrow, mm -hmm. at uh, San Diego Fire Rescue, there up in Hillcrest uh, uh, area. It's uh, Washington, between Washington and University yep, I Avenue on yeah. 9th, uh, San Diego Fire Station 5's. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, we're providing lunch for the fire crew mm -hmm. and a wonderful man who went through all the city processes. Uh, he's uh, landscaping fire stations because um, oh, they're great. they have to be drought tolerant, and the city has turned off the water to save money yeah. for all their fire city properties, and which is a good thing for you know the drought. But mm -hmm. uh, he's going around, got his own funding, wow. and has got a crew that goes in and just re-landscape. It's beautiful, That's and so great. our chaplain corps, we're going to be there with him 
to thank the firefighter. He'll the firefighters there mm -hmm. on uh, I think it's A Division tomorrow, but they're going to uh, we're going to you know my chaplain fund. We're going to furnish lunch for the firefighters and workers. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to yeah. tear it up for the next couple of weeks yeah. and just yeah. bless the city. Yeah, I work alongside of a lot of the uh, emergency services and uh, especially the fire brigade and when they're on the scene I'm like, do you know Mickey Stoney? <laughs> and they're all like, yeah, they all know you. Yeah, well, like, oh, yeah, we know that guy. <laughs> been around for a while. Yeah. yeah. So. so I'm always like, you know, oh, yeah, he's my trainer. <laughs> I got yeah. this little like cheeky little thing that I say. Um, so well, a name fun. like Mickey, I can always say it's the happiest place on earth. And so. you never forget that name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, hey guys, if you're there and you're online, um, make do a comment or something, because sometimes I don't get to see like who's there or, or anything. So let me know if you have any questions. Also, you can pop some questions in there as well. But uh, Mickey, I knew when I heard you um, at the Rock Church, you were talking, um, they asked you to speak for one of the 9-11 um, memorials mm -hmm. um, or Remembrance Days or whatever they're called. Um, and you got up there and um, that was when I first realized that you were on scene and one of the responders. Um, can you share with me something that was like a, you know, a only God moment? Oh, a lot of those, a lot of those moments, wow. ministering. Um, I'm, I was on a uh, response team as a chaplain for airline disasters, commercial airlines. Um, initially, it was called the Spiritual Care Aviation Incident Response Team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the acronym spelled SCARE, you know, S-C-A-I-R. <laughs> So we were the scare team. We thought, no, nah, that's probably not a good name. Hey, yeah. the scare team is here. To, yeah. So they changed it. This was led by the NTSB, and they partnered with the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And so they called it Spiritual Response Team, uh, CERT team, uh, different from other CERT, C-E-R-T teams with fire department. But uh, yeah, we uh, were trained and on call for major commercial airline uh, disasters and my month and a local pastor Mike McIntosh an amazing uh, shepherd and pastor and mm -hmm. uh, also a chaplain for the police uh, he helped get me invited into this team mm -hmm. I was the only fire chaplain everyone else was law enforcement chaplains but uh, our month we signed up to be on call was September so the month of September each year, if there was a plane crash wow. in the month of September, we would be deployed mm -hmm. to go. And there were eight chaplains that would serve at the crash site, ground zero, mm -hmm. and the medical examiner in that local area. So mm -hmm. of course, 2001, our pagers lit up on the 11th right. and uh, we had to get on uh, military uh, flights or commercial when they opened up. Uh, to get to New York, so we were there to coordinate with the mm -hmm. Family Assistance Center mm -hmm. there. First it was at the Armory and then got moved to Pier 94 and then uh, at Ground Zero serving uh, there at Ground Zero for the uh, search and rescue teams mm -hmm. and then uh, at the, the morgue, mm -hmm. at the temporary morgue that was set up that was just overwhelming. And so we served for two weeks, first two weeks. Mm -hmm from the 12th of September till the 27th mm -hmm. uh, was our term. And then a team came in after us. And mm -hmm. But there were a lot of God movements. Uh, one of the things, uh, you know, part of our team was there when they found that cross. It was in a building, Got building got blown out and the steel beams formed a cross. Mm -hmm. And that's now in the 9-11 Museum, that cross. Oh, wow. And so a uh, steel beam that was there Mm -hmm. And part of our group was there when, gosh, they came across this, and that became a, a sign. And what a lot of people wouldn't know, only, I mean, mm -hmm. just a couple of us, but uh, mm -hmm. gosh, um, one of my roles at Ground Zeroes, when a body was discovered from a, a res first responder, police or fire, the whole site would stop mm -hmm. at the pile, right. and very honoring, everything would stop. They would, a very dignified service, they would put the individual in a body bag and then a crane would lift 
uh, the, the individual to a site where I was, mm. or on the other site where Chapla Macintosh was, and so we would, you know, be there to comfort the responders mm. and and then to pray for the uh, individual's family and friends, and so the uh, the chief at Ground Zero he let us know. He says, you know, you need to know Chaplin. He said he called me Fada. Mm. which is father, you know, oh, okay. <laughs> father with a New York heavy <laughs> yeah. accent. He said, father, you need to know we're all Catholic on this department. Yeah. He said, even if we're Buddhist, we're also Catholic <laughs> because it was part of their culture. Yeah. And so uh, we made sure to do the sign of the cross and, okay. and our prayers were in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Ghost uh, mm -hmm. in honoring of their culture. Mm -hmm. But uh, so at the site I was right there, at ground zero, that's where the bodies would be placed. Then they would, uh, we would pray for everyone, and they gave us holy water to sprinkle the body bag. And then they would be put on a, a emergency vehicle with the lights going. They'd take the body off site, very dignified. Everyone standing at attention. Mm -hmm. And then, as soon as they were off site, everyone would go back to work. So, a year later. I went back because we were doing some ongoing follow-up as a church mm -hmm. there at, in New York. And a year later, I, I went back and no one would have known this mm -hmm. except for those that were serving that day. The cross that they had found in a building was brought to the site and was placed on a precipice overlooking the pit as it started wow. to go down. Mm -hmm. And the cross where they placed it mm. was the very site we were praying for the, oh uh, the families. That's where wow. the bodies were taken. No one would have known that except for a few of us that served there. Yeah. And so, gosh, it just gave me chills. One year later, mm -hmm. went back and there's the cross right where I was serving. Mm -hmm. And now that cross is in the museum wow. uh, of 9-11, mm -hmm. which is a very sobering, uh, sobering uh, experience. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of unique moments, a lot of personal time with uh, search and rescue crews, making sure they're taking care of themselves, yeah. uh, praying yeah. for family members out and about in the community. It was, again, that was two, over two decades ago. So, mm -hmm. but you know, that was a major event in our human history, our country's history, world yeah. history. But you know what, that family mm -hmm. that just lost a four-year-old last week, that was a 9-11 event for them yeah. and just as significant uh, to the many that lost loved ones, mm -hmm. uh, that family uh, mm -hmm. was horrifically impacted because of the crisis they went through. And so mm -hmm. it's important to have trained people to be with people going through a crisis because all those 9-11, in fact, yeah. studies yeah. show that uh, in our country, you're either, yeah. you've been through a horrific Traumatic event, mm -hmm. could be divorce, loss of job, financial crisis, yeah. uh, illness that's been life-threatening. Mm -hmm. You've either been through one or you're in the midst of it right now, mm -hmm. or you will. Uh, trauma doesn't seem to miss anybody. No. And severe trauma, 90% of, uh, of our U.S. population will experience a major crisis mm -hmm. in their lifetime. So <laughs> that's why I'm all about training people, Christians, mm -hmm. uh, how to take care of people and love people. Don't just go preach at people. Exactly. You gotta I like go love that. people and yeah. be there to serve. And mm -hmm. uh, if the conversation opens up where they ask questions and need mm -hmm. help with their faith, because people's worldview during times of crisis, sometimes people ask a lot of questions and it's important to have people there uh, to lovingly mm -hmm. lead people in those conversations yeah. and not to push or preach or yeah. you know hit people overhead with the bible you That's want such to a good word love people yeah there's talking about world shalom olivia hair <laughs> i see their home girl she's watching from wales wow yeah i love the british isles uh <laughs> just i've done some training for uh, northern ireland 
uh, train their chaplain corps there really? and their peer support. Yeah, That's for impressive. Belfast Fire Department, wow. Northern Ireland Fire Service. Good, good friends there. Mm -hmm. Haven't been to Wales. Uh, mm -hmm. Been Scotland, England, and uh, Ireland, Northern uh, Ireland as well. That is amazing. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that, that you trained um, over there in Ireland. Oh, I train all over the country, all over the world, wow, yes. Wow, yeah. That's I have amazing. a training. Hey, if you want to join me, uh, well, it's actually close. It's with the Office of Emergency Services, mm -hmm. um, training peer support, crisis intervention for the Hurricane Center there in Florida, oh, in Volusia yes. County. So wow. uh, I've done two. I'm doing two more, one in mm -hmm. January, one in April, but I do mm -hmm. a three day workshop mm -hmm. and train them how to care for their police fire co-workers and how wow. to help the community. You know, um, I also have friends that are in Ukraine and mm -hmm. a couple of chaplains that are uh, over there working in Ukraine as well. Gee, do you know anyone that went over to minister to the people in Ukraine? I do, yeah. Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> what a heart, what a great heart you have. Yeah. It's just on your own, just navigating through and being there in Poland to, yeah. with you the know, refugees. It, it, it started with um, you, you put out the email and yeah. said, you know, through, through the uh, organization CRY. Uh, and then uh, I was like, you know what, I think I want to do this one. Um, I think I want to fly out because I was going to bounce around. I was going to go to London where my daughter lives. And then um, I knew friends in Poland. And then I was going to cross over. But in the whole process, I, I started linking up with people. Mm. And I met, just met people all over. Uh, you know, it turned out that I met another Londoner, a, a chaplain from New Zealand, some uh, former military Good. guy doing the demining, um, Ryan Hendricks uh, is over there. Uh, now and just so many different different people what a great heart yeah but i always encourage people don't undertake things all by yourself no, you, know, you want to be a team and have <laughs> some lesson. support for you because otherwise we can get overwhelmed but yeah mm -hmm. it looked like god yeah. brought a lot of people around you to work yeah. in harmony with others so yeah 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 thank you so much i you guys do you have any questions um hey <laughs> Do you have any questions? Uh, there was somebody from Africa. There was, I have a friend who was in Ghana and mm. he was super interested in, um, you know, in, in this uh, interview today, but he'll probably pop in. Maybe the yeah, time I did zones. some work in Uganda. Um, it was a medical relief uh, back in the day. Uh, but uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful country. Africa's huge. Yeah. So much variety and uh, so much need as in yeah. our country as well, helping people through hardship. Yeah. Um, what is one thing that um, through, through the many years that you've been doing, um, you know, training and things like that, uh, what, is, what is something that, what is a big takeaway for you? What do you, what do you go home with? Well, I, uh, it, it's our chaplain ministry at The Rock. Uh, I got called into this because of a, a firefighter that had given his life because uh, of cancer, which is a lot of uh, firefighters have health problems from, you know, the older crews. They, didn't, they weren't up on all the safety things with cancer and all the carcinogens. Now uh, things are a lot better organized, but the older groups, a lot of hardship there. But uh, yes. I got called into this field and I got a lot of training mm -hmm. through the International uh, Critical Incident Stress Foundation. I became a trainer myself and now I'm on their the ICISF faculty. So they send me around the country as well to train other groups. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but as I started training people, I was like, gosh, it's Every believer needs to know how to help people through hardship. And it's mm -hmm. like the Bible. That's what Jesus did. He mm -hmm. was, people were hungry. People were needy. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew 25, visiting people in prison and jail and uh, the poor, orphans, widows, everyone. Yeah. It's during those times of hardship and how to come alongside and appropriately serve yeah. people, identify mm -hmm. what's happening. But I, it dawned on me that, gosh, everyone could be a chaplain. You could be a chaplain in your neighborhood. 
You could be a chaplain at your workplace. Yeah. You could be a chaplain where you play out in the community. Yeah. Uh, you can be a chaplain with an agency that with fire police and different crisis response organizations. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do at The Rock. We train people uh, mm -hmm. to become chaplains and, and try to encourage people to consider their places of influence where they could be of service to people they live with. My family and in my class, I share this, but yeah. uh, we're constantly trying to do things for our neighbors. And mm -hmm. we've let people know we're the chaplain uh, for our neighborhood and our zip code. And there's mm -hmm. different apps uh, mm -hmm. that are out there, uh, you know, for your neighborhood apps. And mm -hmm. we've self-proclaimed we're the chaplain in our zip code. And my wife has a prayer ministry for her zip code. And people oh, reach out to us. We've sponsored a lunch for oh. all of our neighbors to just come uh, when COVID finally opened up. And yeah. we hosted, there's a uh, company that has fire engine that they made into a pizza oven. Mm -hmm. And so the whole neighborhood came out. We gave them free lunch. They had salad and beverage and pizza out of the back of the fire engine. And then the local fire station came down yeah. with their fire engine, had lunch with everybody. And we had almost 100 people, uh, wow. neighbors that didn't know each other, yeah. that now got to know each other. And that's what being a chaplain is. I You're like just that. loving that's people great. intentionally. Yeah. I just posted on my Instagram yeah. and Facebook um, uh, four. We have four guys, and then they had a friend that came over yeah. as n new neighbors. We invited them over for dinner, mm -hmm. and they're all military. They're Annapolis graduates for the Naval Academy. Mm -hmm. They have they're young and have their whole life ahead of them. Their career. Uh, one of them wants to be a Top Gun pilot. Another oh. one, uh, they they have all. One is going to be a Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to go through the Navy SEAL process, and hopefully, we'll make it. <clears throat> but we started talking, and they've come to church now here at the Rock and wow. checking it out. Just great guys. Yeah. <laughs> Good looking. Someone texted me because <laughs> there was a picture of these guys, uh, my new neighbors that we had over at dinner. They were like. How do I get invited over? <laughs> I go, well, hey, they're they're half your age, okay. Yeah. Of course, uh, you know, forty is now the new twenty. And so, I don't know if you can pull so that true. off. But we started chatting, and so they're going to come over to our house in a couple of weeks again, yeah. just to sit around after dinner, have dessert, and talk about mental health That's and great. spiritual health because yeah. they're going on the front lines. They're going to be. Yeah committed to a career that can be potentially challenging with what you're faced with. And so I want to help prepare them, you know, hey, advanced education and PTSD, some of these things, yeah. and moral injury. Uh, when you know these things ahead of time, it helps prepare you, equip you, so you don't become a, uh, a victim to uh, some of the hardships you'll be exposed to. So I'm looking forward to that. So some of my training really with my good. neighbor, but yeah. that's being a chaplain, right. you know. Yeah. And then uh, I've helped write policy for people uh, mm -hmm. in their place where you work. Uh, we train people and I have policy to help establish a program for peer support, chaplaincy in the workplace. And we have certain companies that we have chaplains mm -hmm. that have been trained here that now in their workplace, they look out for all the other employees and clients and they serve in the area of care, area of care, and yeah. in fact, one a couple of my favorites. One is we have a uh, one of our chaplains works in a veterinarian office, and she's a uh, pet hospice oh, chaplain. Oh yeah, I've met she her. She started yeah. a ministry so in her mm -hmm. veterinary office and cares for people. Uh -huh. um, you know, so wherever we have a roller derby chaplain, we have yeah. airline mm -hmm. chaplains, uh, all kinds of things. And then mm -hmm. uh, helping with hospitals and hospice and police and fire, we, we've trained up a lot of people. That's wonderful. Shalom is always making jokes. <laughs> Any single, yeah, they're all single. <laughs> all five of these guys for the neighbors. <laughs> Go check out my uh, Instagram. And then just it's this, uh, right, just text me. I'll give you the address. You can go knock and <laughs> deliver some goodies to them uh, all the way she's from funny. Wales. So yeah, yeah, she's, uh, she's a friend of mine. Um, so I I am so excited. I mean, I the, you just 
you know, gave us a gold mine of all kinds of, you know, interesting ideas and, you know, places to get resources. I'm just so blessed that you are here. With and me. I'm a resource. So if anyone yes. who gets the recording or uh, uh, is Shalom, let's do a training in Wales. I would love that. Yes, I've been talking to her about that. She's, um, we're on another talk show, a uh, talk show called Tough Talk. And she's, she's one of the, uh, the girls of the Tough Talk. And she's invited me into a group. And so we've all become friends from this uh, British talk show. Awesome. Yeah, it's a Christian British talk show. And, um, and it's been really good. And we can do that. Um, Shalom. Get this guy out there to Wells. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's been nice having this time with you. Yeah. And pray that more and more people can uh, really catch a vision that your neighbor, uh, you can be an answer to someone's prayer mm -hmm. for your neighbor. I realize that, that someone's praying for somebody that lives near me. And as I open up my life, my home, and be of service to my neighbors, we're actually an answer to someone's prayer. And yeah. the privilege when firefighters call mm -hmm. you up and say, hey, chaplain, I need, can we talk? Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had many come to faith, uh, just wanting to help people uh, know they're cared for and loved. And then eventually they want to know, okay, there's more to life uh, than just this physical existence. Uh, yeah. And to be able to explain God's plan. And God's, God's not religious. Mm -hmm. uh, God is love. And the gospel is uh, not just a, a cute story. It's, it's reality. And the truth of God's love gave his own son mm -hmm. that we could have forgiveness in life. And so God wants a relationship. That's what it's about. So. Yeah. Uh, love what you're doing, love Thank who you everybody. are, and keep doing the good work Thank and you turning so much. your pain into a blessing for others, uh, yes. helping others yeah. through what you've been through. So. Yeah. What a joy. Thank you. Amen. Well, thank you for being here. Yes. And thanks, guys, for being here. And we'll go for now. <laughs> Bye. Peace out. Peace in.